Hello, hello. Happy Monday. I have a cat on my lap. Let me grab the camera. See if we can angle it down. Cat. It's a kitty cat. And she sits, sit, sit, and she sits, sit, sit. So, um... Just my luck. Prior to stream, Poppy was hiding and obviously did not want to appear on camera, so I set up the cat cam just pointing out the window there. And then just before we hit, you know, uh, go live, the screen transition to this camera, she decides she wants to join after all and jump on my lap. Hello, Moody Mystery, how are you? Yay, she finally decided to join the stream. Yes, she did. Um, but of course, this means I can't get up, and I can't get up and grab the camera, so I can't really prove that she's on my lap right now. Oh, I'm getting scratches. How is everyone? Uh, Moody Mystery has a message for you, Poppy. It's um, Meow Purr. Meow? Mean anything to you? Uh. Um. Oh no, Poppy beat you again. She's too clever, yes. She has a way of finding the best place to be to not be on camera. Mr. Sinks, welcome, my name. Poppy is the real star of the stream. Similar to how Jade is the real star of From, yes. We need to watch that again. We need to watch it more. Uh, doing well. Thanks for watching my birthday stream. No worries, Moody. Happy birthday again. Doing pretty good. Been looking forward to this. Um, high praise indeed. I mean, I'm just here not sleeping well and um, waking up in the afternoon and dragging my brain into gear and doing the stream for people. If I could just permanently move this camera so that we're looking at the puppy cat. It would be great, but the cable isn't long enough. Yeah? You planned this? You planned this all along? Um, let's do some shout outs since I am currently uh, encumbered and I need to Give Poppy all the squitches. Uh, we have Dr. Yasmin, the good doctor who decided to lurk in the stream early today so as not to catch it, uh, so as not to miss it. Poppy is in control now, exactly. And we have Moody, whose birthday it was uh, yesterday. And we have airplane noise outside, which I don't know if you can hear. Um, probably you can't hear it unless I'm actually speaking because we've got the noise gate on. Oh, look at this cat. If only you could look at this cat and how much she is enjoying the scritches. So, um, yeah, today... Could have gone better. I really didn't sleep much last night. Oh, are we getting up? We're we getting up. Yeah? Do you want to be on a different camera? I think that when I use my projecting voice, um, you know, because you've got to project your voice a bit to pick up, uh, be picked up by the microphone. So whenever I'm on a meeting at work, or when I was on meetings at work, or when I'm doing streams, I'm speaking a bit lower. And I, I get the feeling that Poppy thinks that this is like my I'm angry with her voice. Oh, Poppy, I am now angry. Um, so I feel like she sort of decides, oh, I'll get up. He's, he's mad at me or something. Because normally when I'm speaking to a cat, of course, I'm using a higher pitched voice. Oh, what a sweet little furry baby. Uh, slept terribly too? Sorry to hear that. Sleep is important. So why our brains have such trouble getting to sleep sometimes, I have no idea. There should just be an off switch. 
Well, we can see her ears there on camera. Um, if I move the camera back a bit, we could actually catch her properly. Oh no, she's decided to move. Yep, yep. Puppy cat. I have puppy cam two set up. Oh, she's going towards the bedroom. Uh, six hours birthday stream. Wow, I yeah, I would not have the stamina for that, Moody. Yeah, um, I think like the longest I've done really is four hours, and that was just like because I was playing Ultima Seven, and I fucking love Ultima Seven. Shall we follow Poppy into the bedroom and see if she's setting up there? Because I did try and catch her in there earlier, and she decided she was having none of it. Be right back. Longest was 12 hours. That's insane. I reckon she's gone to sit on the little shelf I made for her that's uh, next to the windowsill. I basically had a big cardboard box and I adjusted it so that it was exactly the right height for the windowsill, so she's got a bit more room to just lie down next to the window and look, <clears throat> and look out. Cats do enjoy watching looking out at the world, looming over people. Ah, so, um, we got a bit of a cat presence at the start of the stream, that's good. An auspicious start. I have so many combo boxes for my cat, yes. Um, she likes some of them, it's interesting. Um, So sometimes I'll be like, look, a box. You're a cat, you like boxes, here. And sniff it and yeah, okay, not interested. But um, certain boxes, she'll be like, yes, this is perfect. I am going to lie down next to it. I am going to scratch my chin with it. I am going to eat it a little bit sometimes. Perfect, yes. Um... So, yeah, it's, it's a bit random as to what she wants, but I've found a couple that she likes and set them up around the place so that she uh, has a bit of her own furniture, I guess. Yeah. Because you do live with your pets. Um, like, they're not just another accessory of yours. You're sharing the space with them. They deserve some uh, comfort, too. Ultimate 8. So... Before I completely run out of brain today and go back to sleep, I think, uh, we've got Ultimate 8 going. And uh, we're on the third episode now. We've gone to see Mithrin, and he told us to go see the Necromancers. Because we're probably going to need all the magic of the world to leave this place. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to become a Necromancer and learn the ways of Necromancing. And here he is, Lothian, and he's in bed. We're just gonna hang around. Oh, look at that handsome fellow. Who's this guy? Mage. Hello, Mage. Can I talk to you through the wall? I can. Ah, stranger. Have you come to the tomb to learn? What tomb? What tomb? Why the tomb? The tomb of Morians. This guy is speaking a little too quickly. The tomb of Morians? Yes, Morians, the Great One, was interred here within these very walls. I'm just going to move my mic a bit closer. What do you mean by interred? 
buried, then given over to Lithos, the Mountain King. Long has it been since Morians joined Lithos. Uh, yes, I'm here to learn. Oh my, this is excellent news. Well, I shall teach you all about our mysteries and traditions. Um, what mysteries? I cannot tell someone who is not of our order about our mysteries. You could learn all if you were to join the order and become a novice. Uh, join your order? Few people join our order. Life here is not easy, but it is rewarding. An excellent demake of this would be cool. Demake? Like, you know, with the, the Ultima 7 engine. Interesting. I mean, you'd have to do away with all the jumping puzzles. Oh no. <laughs> um, what would Ultima 8 be without the jumping puzzles? But yeah, this could be pretty cool to redo using that engine. Do you wish to converse, continue this conversation, my friend? Yeah, I was having, I was chatting with chat, okay. Farewell. Farewell, friend. really annoys me that, like, uh, they advance the, the dialogue without you clicking. Reminds me of the Ultima Underworld 2 jumping puzzle. Mmm. Actually, I wonder if Underworld, like, an Underworld 2 style engine would be a good way to do a remake of Ultima 8. Because it's, you know, single party member and jumping is involved. It'd be pretty easy to remove the jumping puzzles too. You could just put pathways to walk across them. Yeah, like the Ultima 7 way of doing it would be having a bunch of invisible pathways that you have to navigate around. Man, this guy sleeps like the dead. I wonder if there's anything good in his chest. Now, are these gems or are these as rolling balls? Okay, rolling sphere. My time above this ground draws nigh. My dearest lord, the Mountain King calls me, and I must go. Soon I shall shed this mortal coil and join Lithos for life everlasting. Yet before I go, I must fulfill my final charge as necromancer. My final duty is this, my spell. The spell which shall be my addition to the magic of the earth and power. May Lithos be praised. For time immemorial, students of the power of earth shall this spell learn. From my undead lips shall they hear how to coax the lord of all earth to shake his mighty body and make all fall before the user of earth and magic. To call quakes, combine the sacred reagents of bone, wood, dirt, and blackmore. Invoke the power of magic upon these reagents when enclosed within a bag. Then you will be enabled to call upon the power of lithos. This, then, is my final act as Necromancer. I await the call of the Mountain King. Lothian, Necromancer. Alright, so this is a spell. Shake his mighty body. Oh no, it's the Lithos twerking spell. <laughs> the forbidden magic. Is this isometric? It has a weird perspective for an Ultima. Yeah, this is isometric. Um, yeah, the Ultima series previously had that other sort of projection whose name I forget, but it's not quite isometric. Like a orthographic projection, maybe? I don't know. Um, so I could write that down, or I could just look it up when I need to. Hooray for internet. Wakey wakey! Well, if he's not going to wake up, I guess I'll just wander around and loot all your stuff. Some quills. And some books. Voices. The Grim Book. Lovely. What the fish tell me? Let's find out what the fish tell us. What the fish tell me? By Kilandra. Oh, the fish tell me all sorts of things. Like when there's sun and when there's rain. They are so nice and very smart. 
and bubbles come up when they fart. Oh, the fish tell me all sorts of things. I like to listen to them sing. They sing of life beneath the sea, but never mention if they pee. Oh, the fish tell me all sorts of things, like where they are and where they've been. I guess it all just goes to prove you can have your friends and eat them too. And what is this Voices book? The Voices of Mary by Salem. I wake in the night and the rooms are all dead. I follow a dream, she still echoes in my head. The new girl is twitching asleep on the floor. I move through dark rooms and pass through the door. Out in the chill I follow the walk. The spirits aren't speaking, so there's no need to talk. The moon has arisen to flower over the world, while tendrils of mist smoke out and slowly unfurl. There's a sign by the sea that doesn't make sense, and out past the jetty wait sirens, horny and tense. Briefly, through windows in the pale glass waves, I see lost faces, ruined heroes in watery graves. I know what comes next because I've read all my lines. I've been over my part millions of times. As the waters roll in and I'm swallowed by sea, I can hear Mary whisper, calling to me. Come on, baby! From somewhere she cries. I want to, you to love me like spiders love flies. <clears throat> yeah, I might. I might close the window. Go right back. Right. Uh, how do we find out what time it is? There's a clock here. There's a clock that we have to walk over to, like some sort of moron, and then read it. Closer. Avatar can't see very well through this helmet. Oh, sorry, Boyden. Love me like spiders love flies. First known reference to a vor fetish in video games. Oh, we love our vor here in the retro gaming community. The time is now daytide. Whatever that is. One pile of dirt. One pile of bone shards. One pile of wood. One vial of blood. Lovely. One pile of black moor. Another pile of black moor. Earth and magic. Got ourselves a, another bag here. Morians, necromancer, prophet, hero. Dispelling myths, the truth about magic. Ooh. Oh, hello. You're back. Want something? Yeah, can you, can you use your words? What do you want? Mm -hmm. Have a poppy cat, everyone. Can James help? <clears throat> I'm busy streaming right now. But if you want to be on camera, if you want to be on camera, then we can definitely accommodate you, Pop.
Need to blow my nose. Hey, Snick, welcome in. Unmute. Poppy, yes, we've got a rare appearance by the Poppycat here. She decided that uh, her mouth was lonely and she could do with some snacks. It's blurry. Can we fix that? I don't know why OBS keeps stealing the input focus from my chat. Like the new version, for some reason, yeah. We're good. Yeah. What now? Gonna hang out here? Hang out here and watch me stream? Mm -hmm. Well, pick a spot. You could just hang out on the sofa there. And we'll put the camera on. Yeah. I think, ultimately, I'm going to have to build some sort of Lego-powered camera on wheels and uh, we'll let chat drive it around just so that we can keep Poppy on the camera at all times. What's that? They're doing construction work outside. <clears throat> They've been uh, ripping up the pavement and redoing it and all sorts of things. Oh yeah, off we go again. Where to now? Yeah, some sort of drivable camera, because the only other alternative is to get so many cameras that there is no corner of this unit that is not covered somehow. Yeah, she's gone off to maybe the bedroom or something. Wants a bit of privacy. That's fine. We can play some games in the meantime. Uh, go back to the pagan. Yes, I like the total coverage idea. Well, my flatmate might object to that a little bit. Um, like, I do have to share the space with humans as well. Plus, to do it properly, we'd probably have to, like, drill holes in the walls and I wrench. So, yeah. Mobile camera. I'll add it to my enormous pile of uh, projects to do. Back to Pagan! Yes. So, uh, I want to see what this Grim book is all about. Stories to Make Children Sleep by Brother Grim. Wait, there are humans? And no flatmate cam? What if they're more adorable than Poppy? No, I'm not letting my flatmate steal the show here, okay? This is my stream. <clears throat> Jelly was a lad who was so hard to please, nothing would he eat except for plates full of cheese. His obsession was strange and no one knew why. He swore cheese was his meal till the day that he died. His father, a strong man who was hearty and pink, was at his wit's end and driven to drink. He would stay at the tavern and tell of his woe, on cheap tankards of grog he'd money he'd blow. My son, a good lad, though a little bit chunky, has turned into a ravenous Limburger junkie. All my land and my house and the coins in my purse I will give to the man who can remove this foul curse. The old man's plea went out and was told near and far. It was whispered by gossips and made light of at the bar. But one day into town strolled a strange little fellow. His robes were all tattered and his skin a sickly yellow. I can cure your boy, he told the ripe drunken sod. I will make him good as new, this lad you call Todd. 
The father cried, his name's not Todd, it's Jelly, you snot. But go on and give it a try. Give it your best shot. But before he started, the mage asked for first, for a small taste of grog to quell a quick thirst. After slamming four tankards, he got back to work, though his eyes did spin and his hands did jerk. With the boy before him, the mage reared back, while clutching his regents in a small toad sack. He sent out flames of red, green, and blue that engulfed the boy, hiding him from all's view. When the flames died away, as well as the stench, to his father's red eyes, the boy was a wench. Oh dear. Oh no, he cried, and he cursed this new fate. My hard-working boy now looks like dungeon bait. How could you do this, you doddering old fool? Did you sleep every day while in wizardry school? With the excitement now over, the father settled down. Upon the nearest table, his head did, he did pound. Suddenly, a dark-robed figure entered into the grog joint, and at the old mage a withered finger he did point. Then with a flash of yellow, the mage disappeared. Everyone dove for cover, for spellcasters they now feared. With an incantation shouted by the figure in black, the young boy named Jelly quickly transmuted back. As he left the place, everyone heard the words of the monk. Never let a bad spellcaster cast spells, especially drunk. To this very day, the young boy they call Jelly continues to stuff away cheese in his portly pot belly. But his father is content, and he will always smile. This beats worrying about a daughter by a country mile. Tis not that I don't want a girl, claims the tired old father. But when a boy is young, he is less of a bother. A young boy you must check up on every time and again, but with a young girl you must watch all the young men. Well, a bit sexist perhaps, but um, that was a nice poem. This guy's still sleeping. Wake up! Wake up. I need to push this button every time I start the game to make this little mana and health display reappear. Can I just chuck stuff at him? Maybe... Um, maybe we'll just go to sleep for a bit. It's a pity we can't use these chairs. Uh, B for bedroll. Rest for how many periods of time? Two. He's still asleep. Come on, I want to be a necromancer. I want to join the club. Anywhere else we can go here while we wait for the guy to wake up? Old man needs his rest. Yeah. Also the NPC. Hey, Hellstrings, welcome in. You, uh, yes? Gorodin, first master of the Cabal. Lothoan doesn't wake up? Oh, no, wrong way. Come on, Avatar. I mean, Boyden. Hmm. Loved you reading all the books, though. Uh, thank you. The 
The movement in this game seems awful. It's probably my number one complaint, yeah. Like, the avatar just feels so chunky to drive around. And uh, this little tiny step in particular annoys me. Uh, compared to the really fast movement of 7, where you can just like zoom around at the speed of sound, uh, yeah, it's quite a change. Probably the overly detailed animations. Yeah, like if you just did a couple of frame skips, you could probably fix it. Anyway, uh, let's talk to Vividos then. Maybe we can join uh, just by talking to him. Yes, I'm here to learn. Oh my, this is excellent news. Well, I shall teach you all about our mysteries and traditions. Um, traditions then. Our lives are very structured. We must perform our rites very precisely, lest they not be accepted. Yet sometimes such precision can create problems. Like every step has to have a ton of frames, yeah. Uh, not accepted. As you are not of our order, I cannot tell you what much. Suffice to say that titanic forces are often fickle. Okay, how do I join then? Necromancer? Lothian is the current necromancer, but you probably already knew that. I need to speak to the necromancer. I am sorry, but that is impossible. The necromancer is very ill, and she is not receiving anyone. Lothian? Long has she been the necromancer. Lothian has loyally served since I was but a boy. She's too sick to see me? <laughs> the, the dialogue options that we get here. Yes, in fact, she has been slipping in and out of consciousness lately. Even if you were to see her, she probably would not be awake. Not be awake? Um, what, mysteries? I could not tell someone blah blah blah. Join your order? Few people join our order. Life here is not easy, but it is rewarding. What is a novice? A novice is someone who has newly joined the order and has just begun to learn. What problems? As I said, in our rituals, everything must be done at the right time with the right tools. Unfortunately, we are missing a most important tool. Here we go. Quest. Fetch quest. Yes, our ceremonial dagger. It was taken from us by that power-mad witch, Mordea. Ooh. Power-mad? I don't care who hears me say it. Mordea is evil and power-hungry. Long has she been a tyrant, but now she has gone too far. Now that she has the dagger, we cannot perform our rites without her approval. Mordea took the dagger? Yes, never before have we had to worry about such things. People have always feared the cemetery and respected our work, but not long ago, Mordea came here with an armed force and took the dagger. Why this dagger special? It was given to Morians by the Mountain King himself. We cannot perform our ceremonies with any other dagger. People respected your work? Oh yes, we were respected and feared. The necromancers have always been held in just regard as one of the greatest powers of the world. It has taken one so obsessed with power as Mordea to lessen the people's regard for us. People feared you? It is only natural that people fear forces that they do not understand. Of course, they have never had a reason to fear us. Those of our order have always been benevolent, unlike the followers of Pyrus or the Lurker. I don't want to ask you about your entire... Um, pantheon of gods, please. Um, just let me join. What greater power could there be than the power of the land itself? We who follow the Mountain King are peaceful, but when we are pressed, we can wield our power well. Uh, people's regard has lessened? Yes, I am sad to say. We shall yet win them back, however. Lithos will lead us out of these dark times and show to all his power and majesty. Um, what about Mordea? It would do more harm than good for the necromancers to wage more war with Mordea, even though Mordea is power mad. Power mad? I don't care who sees me here. Mordea is power hungry, but she has the dagger. Cannot perform rites. Um. 
You need her approval? Yes, without her approval we cannot perform our rituals. We cannot work under such conditions. We need to get the dagger back soon or there will be great danger. Get the dagger back. How? Lothian is very ill and I must stay by her side. Besides, neither of us are trained warriors to challenge Mordea's guards. If only there were someone... Someone we could send in our place. How could we possibly retrieve the dagger? I'll get the dagger. Will you truly? Yes. Hey, YGY. Welcome in. You haven't been working overtime, so you've missed the last two streams. Ah, oh, that's no worries. Um, they go up on the YouTubes always. Oh, thank you. I have heard that Mordea keeps the dagger in her chambers. You will know that the dagger by its golden hilt and seven eye blade. Please hurry. For soon we will need the dagger. The game keeps tricking me into uh, getting distracted by chat. Um, you missed last stream streams. Yeah, no worries. Um, you can always catch up. And uh, we've only just started the game anyway. We fell from the sky and uh, watched an execution. We talked to a wizard and he said we should talk to the necromancers and become a necromancer. So that's what we're doing. Um, stay by her side. It is, as I've, it is as I have said. Our ceremonies must occur at the correct time. I can tell you no more than that except to say... I must be present when Lothian dies. Okay, bye. Farewell, friend. So, new quest. We have to get the dagger back from Mordea. We were rifling through her chambers the other day. And we didn't see any ceremonial dagger that I can think of. But maybe I missed it. Uh, nice, good to see you. Good night, farewell friend. Good night, YGY. Have a good sleep. Oh, what am I thinking? We can use our special recall item that we have now. Somewhere. Here we go. What is your destination? Central Tenebe. I mean, I think I might have actually seen a dagger, it's just it identified itself as dagger, like nothing special. But maybe that's the one they wanted. I am for a heist! Of course, we need to make sure she's not in her bedchambers. My plate is empty! And it's kind of amusing that these guards have no issue with me just wandering in here. So there was this box. Perfume, yeah. And there's this kind of obvious locked chest behind a locked door. Can we use magic to unlock it, even if we don't have the key? Because we needed to find a key to get in here. And it seems like there's another locked door to overcome. Oh wait, here's a dagger. Is this the dagger? Please, Avatar, just pick up the item. I mean, Boyden. This is an easy way to die, though. <laughs> yeah. Could it be under her pillow? Come on, Avatar. Under her pillow. Oh my fucking god. Okay, doesn't look like we can actually move it. I saw we had a... we picked up a scroll. Scroll of trap detection? Okay, that's, that's a thing. 
What else we got? Trap detection. Go to sight. Roll of invisibility. Would restore to sight be like a reveal invisible things spell? I should probably save and try it out. Just in case. Scroll of Revisibility, enchanted by Mage Thief Vermin. Casting the scroll, my friend, will reveal any hidden treasure around you. Mind you, though, do not cast this while you thieve, for you too will be revealed. Vermin. Nothing. Oh well. I'm not going to waste that scroll. Savings seems like a fantastic idea, yes. All right, well, I think what we could do is Mithrin sells a scroll uh, that allegedly unlocks things, maybe? We could use that. Or maybe she's just hidden the keys somewhere else in the here? There seems to be a basement. Could look around here. Though I don't suppose it would be here. Cheese! Mmm. I wish some of these items were usable. I suppose we could... Yeah, there we go. Chuck things around. I think I picked up one of those jugs, but if it's not explosive, then I don't care about it. Oh no, it's a flask of oil. Well, well, well. It doesn't look like any of these baskets actually contain anything interesting. Now that's interesting. We've got a secret room here. I wonder how we can get in there. Seems like a likely place to hide things. And we also have authorized personnel only. With a tiny little lever here. Oh, come on, Avatar. Just, just like, use the power of your mind to flick switches and things. There is no escape from this prison. being chased by this little, little guy. Skelet. Oh, okay, fine. I don't want to attack the little guys, they're too cute. Locked door. So I guess this is where Mordea keeps her, um, Uh, people who are against her regime. What's the word? <laughs> Someone had fun arranging the items in this barrel. Poor little critter, you monster. I'm sorry, Mr. Sinks. It was it or me. Oh, wow. That's a lovely torture room. Check that shit out. The stuff in that barrel, yeah. Alright, so there was a, a lever to flick here that opened that door. Could there possibly be another lever we can flick to 
gain entry to that secret room. Fish? Man, if it's hidden under all of these sacks of flour, and I have to carefully move them out the way, I'm going to be so annoyed. Because moving things in this engine is incredibly tricky. The art in this game is great. It's a shame the movement sucks so bad. Yeah, I think that they, to get the arch, they must have done some 3D renders and then captured all of it as sprites. Or at least for the, the characters, they have that kind of look of early 90s CG, you know? Uh, like ray traced is what I'm getting at. But then, yeah, the walls look like your traditional pixel art and they look very nice. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything under these sacks. Oh no, now I've trapped myself in here, haven't I? It's funny how some people don't like the inventory system in Seven and Pagan. I love it personally. It's immersive and cool having a backpack that I can move stuff around in. Better than the modern spreadsheet inventory. I agree, Dr. Yasmin. Um, I'm not so keen on Eight, where it feels just a little bit cramped and the cursor often rejects whatever you're trying to drag in to, to do something, like dragging it onto the avatar, it'll be sometimes cross or whatever. Um, so I feel like, like it could have been bigger. And you also can't drag stuff onto bags, which is maybe in response to people losing items in 7. But personally, I quite liked being able to drag stuff onto the bag icon itself rather than... What the hell happened here? One? 63. 30. One. 29. 24. Is the bag full? Is that why you're not letting me drag stuff into it? Zero. Wait, zero sent my whole stack in there. Weird. Yeah, um, bigger inventory space would be good. And honestly, I feel like zooming the camera out a little bit would also be nice. Um, it's not so bad here inside, but when we were running around outside, you, you come across stuff really quickly. Like you can't see into the distance very far and you don't have as many contextual clues as to sort of where you are on the map. Oh no, I think we really are stuck. Like, I threw a bag around, and it landed, like, here. Okay, okay, we, we've escaped. We've escaped the flower room. Whew, hardest puzzle done. Save. Um, but yeah, the Ultima 7 inventory, I actually unironically love. Um, like, it's got the weight and the volume stuff sorted, and... Sometimes I wish I could fit more bags inside my backpack and things like that, but like just being able to organize it neatly and you can actually see stuff in there. And occasionally you do have puzzles where you rummage through someone's chest of drawers and look underneath an item to find the key that they hid there. Um, a close runner up I think would be Neverwinter Nights 1 and uh, some of the Resident Evils do it, where you've got a grid system, but uh, certain items take up different grid sizes. And it's often derided as inventory Tetris. But uh, yeah, you know, like it should be a thing where if you don't care about it, uh, you can just throw stuff in your pack. But if you really try and want to organize things neatly, you can maybe squeeze a little extra room in there. Uh, I like that. Plus it makes thing it makes sense that bigger items like halberds take up more space in your backpack. Unlike, you know, your oblivions and your skyrims where everything is just one line. Where do you suppose we would get access to this room from? 
Maybe there's a switch upstairs. Or maybe in here? I guess it might be upstairs. I mean, I do have a walkthrough available to me when I get stuck. I'm not going to be super strict on this and uh, intend to play it like my first playthrough. Because it's been a long time and I've forgotten a lot of bits of this game. And I don't want to spend ages just rummaging through things and being stuck on stream and not entertaining, especially when I don't have a cat on the screen. I mean, at least when I have Poppy on the screen, people can ignore what the hell I'm doing and concentrate on the important things. If I were a secret lever, where would I hide? Can I move barrels? I can! Hmm, jeez. There's also this statue in the middle of Lady Modea herself, of course. Don't see anything obvious there. Hell yes, barrel movement tech. Gomitan, welcome on in. Hello, hello. How are you? Um, I did some shout-outs earlier, but for people who do not know Gomitan, uh, Gomi is a absolutely lovely Australian trash mannequin VTuber uh, who plays all sorts of interesting games, both retro and indie. And you should check her out. Hello. I am sorry, but I cannot talk to you now. I must attend to her ladyship. Already? I'm just wondering if you know of any secret passages in the castle? Yeah, no? You are well. You're winding down for the day. Thanks for the shout out and the nice words. Not at all. Um, you deserve them, and I'm glad to hear you're winding down for the day and can have a good rest. I did not sleep well, so I rested most of the day and I'm only just sort of pulling together a couple of brain cells so I can play the games on stream. Maybe there's a lever in here that we missed. Just need to rummage through everything. I mean, it is nice that you can move a lot of items around. Um, too many games would be like, oh, that chair? No, that's fixed in place. No one can ever possibly move this chair. Ah, yes, I remember. Got to write a complaint to the Brain Quality Control Department. I think my brain was a, a reject, a knockoff. Uh, I got it discounted. Nothing behind there. Can we move the mirror? No. Uh, knockoff brain. Can't unsee this. The avatar wearing a little red dress and knee-high boots. Yeah, it is quite a cute little red dress with uh, booties. Mm, cannon. With a big chunky belt at the midsection. Definitely a dress, yeah. That's fine. This avatar can wear whatever they want. Um, in fact, from my the end of my Serpent Isle playthrough, I've decided that my personal headcanon for this playthrough of the game is that uh, the actual avatar, Poggers, uh, who is a girl, and also mechanical now, um, she just went home normally. She took a, a ship back to Britain. 
uh, she let Boyden have the honors of doing the uh, end game things. And as a result, it was Boyden that got snatched by the Guardian and taken to Pagan. Uh, I am pro this. Knee high boots are inherently great. I don't have any myself, but uh, they do sound pretty great. And the reason I have decided that uh, this avatar is Boyden, if we go give ourselves a quick save, is just like in Serpent At Isle. This very moment, Britannia burns. Yeah, yeah, avatar, whatever, uh, guardian, whatever. Um. The protagonist of this game has a habit of exploding into limbs. Limbs that wriggle around after we've uh, removed them from our person. Quick load. Load. There we go. It is Boyden. See? Oh no, my beautiful body! At this very moment, Britannia burns. Alright, I reckon I'm just going to go and see Mithrin and buy a scroll of open from him and see if that works. Uh, plateau. Actually, a great case for this not actually being the Avatar and Payton. Well, you know, it's like you never... Okay, like if we open the inventory thing, you do see his face. And he is, for some reason, a blonde male again. Um, but if you discount that portrait, we, we don't have any boots. We need to find some boots. Um, you know, if you just think of him as someone who's constantly wearing this full face helmet, uh, it could be anybody. Guardian just assumed we were the Avatar. It's a case of mistaken identity. Mithrin, where are you, Mithrin? Want to buy some spells from you. Blonde could just be Boyden's natural hair colour. I guess so. Good day, Boyden. Hello, Mithrin. Good to see you, my friend. Is there some assistance I can give you? Uh, I wish to buy scrolls. Ah, yes. There is only one spell which I have bothered to transcribe onto scrolls. This spell enables the caster to dispel magics that seal entryways and portals. Unlike other spells, you do not need to learn the spell before casting it. However, the magics upon the scroll will disappear after you read it. Yeah, I know how scrolls work. So you may use each spell of opening once. You wish to buy the scroll of dispelling magical portals? Aye. Since the ink and parchment do have a cost to them, as well as the time I take to transcribe the magical words, I must ask you for 50 obsidians. No haggle option? Oh well. Excellent. Use this well. Um, okay, bye. Good evening, my friend, and farewell. Yeah, sorry, I don't have uh, quotes set up, Mem. Also, hi, Mem. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, when I play Pagan next, I'm going to name him Boyden every time. Um... Blah blah blah. Yes, um, I could probably, I could probably set up a quote system, but I don't want to use stream elements for everything. I want to do it myself, you know. Uh, sorry, I'm just lurking and hanging out, and forgot to say hello. No worries, lurkers are quite welcome here. Um, and I always appreciate you being here, Mem, even if you're just lurking, doing other things. Um, Mem is lovely. Yes. So we've got a scroll. It probably won't do what we want it to do, but we'll give it a go. Central Tenebrae. Uh, when you're 
making a magical scroll like this? You know, that as soon as you read it, it uses the spell and evaporates. It must be really difficult, like, you're, you're writing your final bit at the end of the scroll of your magic, and you've got to avoid, like, your eyes glancing up and looking at the other text that you've just written, because otherwise it's like, oh, you started reading the scroll, magic's coming out now. How do we get into this little inner courtyard, do you suppose? It actually looks completely sealed up. Come on, this way. Let's get your fat ass through the door, Avatar. Okay, so this is fine. Uh, we can get out here. Um, I wonder if they bind their magic somehow and then pull the bind off after it's wrapped. What like the mechanism Toy Makers use to the little plastic tab to cover the battery connection to stop it using battery? Yeah, actually that would be a really good idea. And I wish I had, like, some of the stuff that I use batteries for. Um, like I have a, um, is it in here? I have a calipers, right? You know, like a digital calipers that tell you how wide a thing is. And it uses a coin cell battery. But uh, when I've turned it off, it's still like slowly using a little bit of power or something. I don't know. Uh, it's really dumb. <sighs> okay, so let's try the scroll, although I don't think it's going to work because it seems to be for magically locked stuff. And this looks pretty much like a key that's locked it. Just kind of navigate through all these doors. They seem to keep closing themselves on me. And we'll give it another save, because I don't want to use this scroll up that I paid 50 obsidians for. If we don't have to. Scroll of Dispelling Magical Portals by Mithrin. This scroll has been constructed to unravel the counter magics used to seal all types of portals, including doors and sealed walls. Do not store in damp areas. Oh, sealed walls. There's that sealed wall downstairs. Could give that a go. Hmm, nothing found. All right. So maybe the key is downstairs in that secret room we saw. Locked door. Actually, you know what? We do have a key ring and we have been picking up keys. You never know. No, it's still locked. Can I move her throne? No, too heavy. We'll go downstairs and we'll see if we can dispel the wall that we sat we found there. Because it looks like you should be able to walk through this bit. Take that wall. Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. Now what? Got a dagger. Is that the dagger? Got a parchment, which I'm annoyed that I can't read. We have this little guy that's hunted us down. Sorry, little guy. And see, this is my issue with it. Now, we can't just walk over or around this tiny little corpse because the avatar is exactly as tall as the ceiling, so he can't walk over it. Seven gave you a little bit of head clearance. 
Uh oh, critter attack, yeah. Um, so there's a candle. Draw a dagger. I mean, I'll take this dagger, sure, just in case it's the dagger, but I don't think it is. Uh, can we move this candelabra? I guess not. What if I light all the candles? Does that unlock this thing behind us? So what was the point of that? If I can gain entry into this secret room, but then there's nothing actually in here. Move the chair? I don't know. It makes no sense. I mean, I'm assuming we would want to open that, but there's nothing visibly on the shelf behind the portcullis anyway. Maybe if I get arrested for crimes, that's where my stuff would be? But I seem to recall that in this world you don't really get arrested for crimes. Uh, the sorcerer guy just shows up and uh, explodes you for even the minor of... Um, Infringements. Alright, I'm resorting to looking at things. Do 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 looking at things. Okay. Yes. That would have taken me a while. Uh, which house is that? Central Tenerife? Uh, Aramina. I had a map here somewhere before. We'll wing it. H H H H H H H. There's a box in Mordea's bedroom. Yeah, we looked in it. It's got perfume in it. Um, I'm supposed to talk to the servant girl. Oh, for heaven's sake, Avatar! Like, why did they make the widths of the doors the exact same widths as your character? Um, so yeah, we can't get at the treasure chest, but this box just has perfume in it. Um, so, I need to talk to the servant girl, but the servant girl is busy being a servant girl. So, we need to actually wait until a different time of day. She won't talk to us right now. I'm sorry, but I cannot talk to you now. I must attend to her ladyship. Find me later at my house in East Tenebrae. I will be there at Bloodwatch. Oh, hey! I don't think she said that before, or maybe I accidentally clicked through it at the wrong time. Blood, watch, blood, watch. You got to watch that blood. So we'll just do the heroic thing and go camp out at this person's house, waiting for them to come back. Oh, 
Over here? What does this person want? Hello. How's about helping out a poor cripple? Okay. No, you can't have all of my money. You can have three. Here you go. Thank you kindly, stranger. May Hydros find favor with you. I'd like to avoid Hydros' attention right now, actually. Is this a house? No, this is the one that's attached to the trainer. These statues have a little plaque on the Temple of the Divine Hydros. Also looks a bit too fancy for a servant girl. Oh yeah, we read some books here. Yeah, like, if the camera were just zoomed out a little bit, I think we wouldn't lose too much in terms of the detail we could put into sprites. But it would be really helpful just to have that extra context of, like, where you are in the world. Hmm. This place is locked. Thankfully, we can climb. Ah! May have sprained a muscle doing so. Oh, there's no way down from the roof. Boo earns. Now, carefully, carefully... There you go, Boyden. Good, good, good boy. Done. Right, I shall torture you then. I swear on my mother's grave that I had no part in that. Really? Uh huh. I thought you said your mother was sick. Stay out of trouble. Now this place is definitely too fancy for a servant girl. Salkind, the Seneschal. Are you using ScumVM for this? Nope. Uh, OG, DOSBox, and my original install CD. I have considered using ScumVM for it, because um, it would probably... Like, you can see we're getting some tearing on the screen, and I think that's actually from the game and not from anything I have set up. Um, and, you know, there may be some quality of life improvements to be had, which would be nice. Fightmaster! But, um, you know, I can run it in DOSBox, and it is the sort of original experience, which is also nice. I don't have anything against Exult or the Pentagram engine for ScumVM or uh, any other remade engines. They are very nice and let people run games on modern systems. Um, but I'm kind of in this for the nostalgia trip, so... Yeah, I, I think I tend to do things using DOSBox where possible. There's that fighty guy. Alright, let's pull up a map. Oh, it was next to the trainer. 
We were actually quite close. And then, of course, we have to figure out what time of day it is. That's locked. Uh, okay, yeah, keep going this way. So that's the trainer, then it's... I don't know if you heard that, but my phone is hungry. I should charge it. Right. Uh, so it looks like this is actually her house. It's just that it's locked uh, at this time of day and we can't just barge in there. How rude. So I guess we'll wait here. I have no idea what time of day it is. Let's wait for two periods of time. Two standard periods. It's still a locked door. I mean, I have no idea if I need to like exit the zone and then come back, or if people will be doing their business schedules after we rest. Delicious charge. Hello, Fire Broadside. Welcome in. Uh, we're watching you on 75 inches. Oh, that's a lot of inches, Val. Um, Shoutouts for Fire Broadside. The Buccaneer. Uh, another Aussie streamer who occasionally does retro things, occasionally does other things. You should check him out. And uh, you know what, Empress? Let's give you a shout-out, too. Because your desk setup is slowly coming together, and you could be streaming any day now. And it will be really good to see you streaming again. Alright, so has this person come back home yet? Maybe? Maybe they just came home and immediately locked the door? Who knows? What I need is a clock. Uh, was there a clock in the Fightmaster's house? Because we could use that so that we wait until the appropriate time. Yeah, this is the place. Maybe downstairs? I feel so cold out. <laughs> As you should be. This is a good number of inches, yeah. Oh yeah, we had this place here. And there is a clock, but we can't read it because it's behind a wall. Um, and there is this switch here. Like if I had some sort of telekinesis, maybe we could use that. Or maybe we need to buy another open magical wall scroll from Mithrin and we can open this up. Because it does look a bit sus, doesn't it? Unfortunately, Shimino is probably holding on to our pocket watch. So we don't have a nice easy way to tell what time of day it is. But it's portable. Do some training. I kind of... I plan to do a training montage stream. Because um, if you look at our stats here, 17 strength, 15 intelligence, 17 dex. Ultima H is one of those games, uh, a bit like Elder Scrolls games, where you learn by doing. So if we just stand here, repeatedly swinging our mace, we will eventually get stats going up. And uh, it... I think it goes up higher if you're fighting an enemy. Uh, it goes up faster, rather. But it, you will get some experience just from swinging away at air. And I've set up a XDo tool macro 
to just repeatedly left click. Uh, so I figured what I could do when the circumstances are right is I could do a just catting stream. If Poppy happens to, you know, be hanging around and being beautiful and not running away from the camera, we could do a chill catting stream and then in the corner we'll just have Boyden here, the avatar, repeatedly whacking away at empty air until we boost our stats up to the max. Is that the Slayer Mace? It is. Slayer. We picked it up last episode. Alright, well, I guess we'll just keep waiting until we can maybe get through these doors. One period of time, perhaps? It would be nice if there was a change in light level uh, to tell us intuitively whether we're at nighttime or daytime. But I guess not. I mean, they do fade the palette out here when we do the resting thing. So they presumably could handle a change in light level. Like, it wouldn't be perfect. Uh, you know, you've got these lit windows here that you wouldn't want to fade out. But, um... Yeah, okay, I'm gonna assume that we need to actually exit the area and come back. So why don't we do that? We'll go find somewhere with a clock. We'll wait until Blood Watch. Then we'll load the zone. Because we need to see the servant so that we can get the key, so we can steal the dagger, so we can give it back to the necromancers, so we can get amazing necromantic power! Clock, clock, clock. Nope, nothing here. Oh, please, please, just go down the stairs, please. Uh, I swear, if I were to mod this game somehow, or like, you know, maybe we hack it into ScumVM as an option, just making the navigation around these obstacles a little bit more forgiving would be everything for me. I could enjoy this game so much more. And it is still a good game. It is still a good Ultima game. I will stand by that. It's just that back in the day I came to this game after the amazingness of Ultima 7. And it can't quite compete with that title. But on its own merits, it's a pretty cool game. And it's not like we haven't had a singular avatar without the party before. Ultima Underworld has you on your own. Uh, I wonder what it would take to edit that movement. Like, could we just do something in Pentagram to make the avatar smaller or something? I would assume so. Like, I assume that the collision detection has to have been re-implemented in Pentagram. And you could just maybe say the bounding box is a little smaller. I don't know. I mean, collision detection in games can be a bit of a complicated subject, so probably, you know, I'm talking out of my ass and there's more complexity to it than you would assume. It's kind of how it goes with software in general, honestly. Product manager wants you to just add a button in the top bar here. Oh, just, you know, just a small button. Just one button, please. Oh, but that top bar. That top bar was constructed using crimes against humanity. And is not easily editable. Okay, we're at the tavern. 
please would someone have a clock? I mean, I could teleport back to bloody Mithran's house. He's got a clock. Oh no, water. Stay away from that, Boyden. It's deadly. Should put one in your backpack. I would, but everything is so heavy and takes up space. This is where, like, having a full party of assistants to carry all your crap around with you uh, makes role-playing games a bit more fun because you can be a complete loot goblin and just carry everything you find around with you. Just put them on your pack mules, you know? Looks like I haven't been in this house before. Is this just trapped? Yes. What do we have here? Helmet. Fire gems. I think fire gems are useful. I can't remember if they are for currency or for exploding. I think they might be for exploding. And this bag is full. Hooray. All right, all right, fine. We'll put it in this bag. No, you know what? The main backpack. Just everything in the main backpack. It's fine. Double click on one and find out. Indeed. Uh, maybe when I've got someone to explode. I think fire gems are basically oil flasks. Excellent. So we've, we've filled our backpack full of all sorts of high explosives then. Nothing can go wrong with this plan. I too commit crimes against humanity to create GUIs. It's the only way to do it, broadside. Um, you build something in order to work for this one thing, and it works, and it's great. And then people have to go and get all problematic on you by asking for changes. Alright, we're just wandering around and rummaging through people's stuff now, so... Um, classic role-playing game. Uh, let's do the teleport thing. Just, you know, screw it. Uh, Plateau. We'll wait until, I think she said Bloodwatch. Do, 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 do. There we go. Mithrin, tell me you have a clock. I've got an abacus. Ah, and a clock. So, I have 40 obsidian coins, not enough for another scroll. Time is now first ebb. I'm going to assume that we should just slowly sleep one thing at a time, because otherwise we could skip past it. There aren't actually that many periods of time in the pagan day. Three moons. I suppose that means Pagan has three moons. Last herb. I think one more, maybe? Even tide, not quite. Bloodwatch. Awesome. Let's just bring this with us. No? Oh, come on, boy. There you go. Got the abacus, too. I don't know why the game is so picky about dragging stuff onto your character in order to pick it up. 
Like it's trying to find space in the world for it, but it should just realize it can um, it can dump it. Speaking of dumping things, I figure I'll only really want to use these items up here. So. Uh, then we need to teleport out of here. Uh, Central Tenebrae. Got to hurry. I don't know how long Bloodwatch will last. There's a little training area up here. I did not see that before. Hello, guard. How's the guarding? Uh, let's just jump off here. Should I brought the clock? It's heavy, though. I mean, if we're going to make anywhere in the game our base of operations, it may as well be Mithril's house. Uh, yeah, Mithril's house. All right, so we are here. We need to go south of the fighty place. Wasn't that it, though? Yes, here. Let's bring it back there. I mean... It's fine. <laughs> of course there was one inside her house. Oh, servant girl. Let's talk about things, about your boss. Now that she's not here. Gotta go. Bedtime for Hendrix. Share photos. Please do. Take care, Impy. See you later. By what are you called? My name is Aramina. What do you do here? I am merely a servant here. Tell me about the palace. This is the home of our Tempest, the Lady Mordea. No, it isn't. This is your house. Tell me of the Lady Mordea. Well, it's not good for me to speak of my employer behind her back, but I will tell you she is a hard woman. Lady, it's even worse for you to speak about your employer in front of her. Why do you say she is hard? She will stop at nothing to preserve her power here. Nothing, not even murder. She hardly notices my existence. At least she does not take the pleasure in tormenting me like her seneschal does. Oh no. Um, she wishes to preserve power? The power of the tempestry, my lord. The power to control the weather. That is, indeed, great power. Uh, yeah, it is a fascinating setting. Um, tell me of the Tempestry. Tempestry, my lord? Surely you have heard of it. It is the power that is transferred through the bloodline of the Tempests. What power is transferred? As I said, my lord, the power to control the weather. While at times a good thing, it can be a powerful weapon to hold over the people's heads. What do you mean by bloodline? It is inherited, father to son, mother to daughter. She holds it over people's heads? I mean, I mean, it's a powerful tool to help the people's herds of Torax, that is. Please ask me no more. I'm afraid Salkind will punish me. Salkind punishes you? Punished? No, no, not punished. Uh, pampered, yes, that's it. Pampered by Salkind. Please, friend, I do not wish to speak of it. Bye. Thank you, sir. So, speaking of it... Good morrow to you. Have you met Devon? Devon? Well, I know him, but I've never actually met him. But I think I'd like to. You'd like to meet him? Let's, let's set him up. Matchmaking. Once, when I was sent to the store to purchase something for Lady Mordea, he was there. I thought he had the nicest smile. You know of him? 
I've seen him and I know his name. I rarely get to meet anyone outside. I know Devon. We, we are besties. You do? Oh, is he as nice as he looks? He has such a nice smile. And his eyes, they're blue, aren't they? I really think he's handsome. Do you think that you might mention him, me to him next time you see him? Matchmaking, yes. Of course I will. That is very thoughtful of you. Now, I must get back to work. But you're not working right now. This is your time at home. Good morrow to you. Um, what do you do here? I want to talk about the central a little bit. Servant, palace, uh, Mordea, uh, hard. Tell me of the seneschal. Salkind is her seneschal. Uh, tell me of Salkind. He sets me to difficult tasks and delights in tormenting me until I'm barely able to complete them. What difficult tasks does he do? No, no, certainly not difficult. Rather challenging. That's it. He gives me challenging tasks. For instance, he will give me a very small brush and tell me to clean the floor of his room. Then he will arrive, his boots muddy from walks along the shore, and track mud all over the floor I just cleaned. Maybe she's doing housework. Yeah, I guess. He then points to the dirt out to me and chastises me for poor work, calling me a no-good slackard. How does he torment you? Uh, perhaps torment is too strong a word. Actually, he's quite the joker. For instance, just today he was walking down the hall towards me when he suddenly cornered me and began to pinch and grab my body. Don't you think that's funny? No, no, that's not funny. No, really, truly, I didn't find it very humorous either. But he finds it hilarious, so I smile and try my best to stay out of his way. There is precious little I can do. Slap him! No, my friend, I have no desire to lose my job nor my head, for to strike the seneschal would be considered treason. I would be beheaded before the next morning. Well, I must get back to work now. Uh, there's just one more thing. I'm looking for a dagger. A dagger? I know nothing of daggers. I'm just a servant of the lady. I need help. I'm not surprised by that, my lord. Many a people are in need of help these days. Are you certain? Yes. Look, I don't want to get into any trouble, my lord. Please do not ask me to do anything that might cause me to anger the lady. I promise you won't get into any trouble. Oh, I do not know why, but I'm going to trust you. Modea keeps a very special dagger in a locked chest. You'll find the chest in a small closet near her bed. Uh, it's in a chest? Yes, and I have the key. I will give you the key, but you must promise not to tell anyone where you got it. I promise. Very well, here it is. Do what you will with it, but remember, you did not get that key from me. What key? Bye. Thank you, sir. Let's uh, do a proper save now. Uh, so we got the key, and she's definitely not going to get in trouble for it. Because uh, we promised. I am curious if we could possibly go see Devon briefly and uh, do some matchmaking. Does Devon usually hang out by the shore where we met him? Or does he have other places he goes to? Actually, he has a house. I can see on this map here. So maybe... Oh, clicked outside the window. Maybe we'll just go see him at his house, possibly. He's in the poor end of town, of course.
for a fisherman, he sure doesn't spend much time fishing. Yeah, well, it seems like, um... I mean, I've been eating stuff when I come across it, especially cheese, because yum, delicious cheese. Um, but actually, it doesn't seem like I need to eat. I mean, I guess because I'm Boyden and I'm a terrifying construct. Um, need the bridge. Is that this way? So maybe there's not much call for it, like being a fisherman here. Bridge, bridge, bridge. Here we are. Is this a food equals healing game? Kind of, I think, Stardrop. Um, if it does give you healing, it doesn't give you very much healing. Uh, you would have to ravenously consume many, many uh, food items just to gain a little bit of health back. A bit like an Elder Scrolls game. Or Thief. Um, yeah, here he is. Mostly healing seems to come from potions. Hey, Devin. How's it going? Hello there, Void. Good day. Any news? I was just about to ask you the same, friend. Nay, there is nothing new to tell. Tis a shame about Toran, though, is it not? Who? A good man he was. Torin was the gem cutter. His works were quite good. I can tell you, his wife and son are quite distraught. Who can blame them? His wife? Ah, poor Rian. She did not handle the execution well. They had been married for more than twenty years. All she does now is sit by her loom and weep, so I hear tell. Pity. His son? His son does not handle grief like his mother. Torwin has decided to take matters into his own hands, though only the Titans know what he will do. I suppose violence would not be out of the question. I can only hope that it is not the case, for even if he could get past the guards, Mordea's abilities are more than adequate to stave off his assault. What about Torin? He was killed, he was. Executed at the Lady's command. I know the reasons they gave, but Torin was no blasphemer. There is tyranny in this city. It'd be dreadful shame if they were burgled. Yeah. That's for sure. Be careful what you speak to others. Okay, goodbye. I guess we can't hook him up. Look, I know this servant girl. You'd like her. She's definitely not going to get into trouble anytime soon for giving him the key to Mordea's private stuff. Uh, and we could walk back there, or we could be smart about it and teleport. <sighs> bit sleepy. Maybe once we get the dagger and go back to the necromancers, we'll call it. Because, um... Yeah, my sleep's been all over the place, and it's not going to help things if I stay up late. And I'm probably going to stay up late anyway, because I'm terrible. Uh, I have absolutely no self-discipline. But you got to at least try, right? I mean, I'd argue it's especially difficult with me not having a job at the moment and not having that regular 9 to 5 schedule demanded of me. Um, but that was rough too, you know? Like, you can force yourself up to be at work, but uh, it, it takes its toll on you nevertheless. Being forced to use your brain for the benefit of other people? Awake, but at what cost, exactly? Woo! Self-discipline! Yeah, there is no alarm clock that I could set. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Who dares to awaken the Tempest? I'm, um, sorry. I wandered in here while I was looking at chat. Sorry? Feel a touch of a Tempest's power! <laughs> yeah. Uh... No discipline. That's my problem. Here lies the Avatar. Rest in peace. 
Uh, we got the key though, so we can actually load that save that we got recently. I am not a morning person. I always feel awful if I have to get up too early. Yeah. Um, like, I've been up early sometimes, and I, I can be lucid for a little bit, but inevitably I crash around, like, lunchtime. Um, why is this open? Because I left it open. Because I want it open. Look, I'm going to open your back door. I'm not a time person. Oh, yeah. Fourth dimension, am I right? Uh, the working world is, ba is biased towards early risers and just doesn't serve the needs of those who are not. Definitely. And honestly, the whole... Um, the whole deal with... Everybody has to be keeping the exact same working hours is mental and archaic. Um, you know, like, everyone has to cram themselves onto public transport at 9am and get to work and at 5pm you cram yourselves on again and the post office is only going to be open 9 to 5 so good luck ever getting to the post office. Um, it's dumb. If we staggered out people's hours then maybe things would be easier. Um, like, there would be less burden on transport, people could get to the shops that they wanted to go to. Yeah. I do okay with my workplace, they're pretty happy with me starting and finishing late. That's nice, uh, Fire. It's, it's something I enjoyed a lot when I was working for the university. Um, uh, honestly, I enjoyed it possibly a bit too much. My working and waking hours started to drift into, uh, like, the middle of the night like way way out of whack with reality I still put in the hours I still did good work and um, I was grateful that the professor who employed us was very understanding that yeah programmers be like that sometimes um, but yeah I did catch a lot of late night buses home when the like, the trains would stop for a short period of time, so you had to catch the night ride bus. Sometimes I walked. That was quite enjoyable, though. Because at night, you know, I'm not going to get super hot and sweaty from walking. And yes, it's a two-hour walk home, but it's quite nice. Nighttime is quiet, and nobody's in your business. It's the best for getting stuff done. Yes! It's so peaceful at night sometimes. Like, all of the busy chatter and everything has died down. People have gone to bed or they're just being calm. At dusk, you can look into people's windows and perv on them if you want. That's nice too. Okay, time is now three moons. Maybe that's lunchtime. Maybe Mordea will be having her lunch. Who the hell knows? I want to unlock more of these teleporters. These are nice. I mean, I guess it's... I'm partly like a cat, you know? Because cats like to be awake at this time of night as well. And they like to snooze during the day. Maybe I've picked that up that habit from the various cats I've lived with through my life. Certainly Poppy has been very kind to me lately and not demanding I wake up at 9am to give her breakfast. Uh, she's been happy to snooze with me until the afternoon before she starts grumbling that uh, she has a hungry. Don't mind me, guards. I'm just... Oh, yeah, okay. She's in her chambers. Off with his head. I suppose we could talk to her. Oh, 
What an ugly painting. Well, it's your painting. Greetings! I'm Boyden. Are you speaking to me? Yes. Who are you that you dare address the Tempest? I'm Boyden. I know not your name nor your face. I think you are not from Tenebrae. Where are you from? I am not from Britannia. I am actually from Serpent Isle. Uh, but sure, Britannia. Uh, I'm from far away. Do not toy with me, rogue. I will not tolerate such rudeness. Be gone from my sight. What a lovely person. Flog the peasants. Ah, and this must be the Seneschal. Greetings, stranger. May I ask your name? Certainly, I am Salkind. And who might you be? I'm Boyden. Can you still kill everyone in this? I don't think so. I... Damn that... Stupid text progression. What do you do? What do I do? My, we are a nosy little thing, aren't we? Well, if you must know, I am the Seneschal to Lady Mordea. What's a Seneschal? Exclamation mark Seneschal. Oh my, we aren't too up on titles, are we? Yes, I am the Seneschal. It is my duty to take care of running the day-to-day -day affairs of the city, so that our Tempest, the Lady Mordea, can concentrate on more important things. Like flogging the peasants. Like, could you just kill the Tempest? Uh, yeah, he's the middle manager. Um, like, from what I remember, Dr. Yasmin, you can get away with some murders, but usually this guy will just teleport in... Actually, no. The Seneschal is different from the Sorcerer, isn't he? Maybe. Whatever. Someone teleports in and explodes you for basically any crime. But I think it is possible, maybe glitching things, to, to kill them. Uh, tell me about Mo Lady Mordea. She is a wise ruler and fierce leader, most worthy of the title Tempest. So many times people say, this thing or that thing cannot be done, and yet she does it. Do we not now have much lower crime than under the previous Tempest? There is your proof. I accept... Mordea doesn't bother with Baron. Yeah, that's right, Baron. We haven't met him yet. We're gonna get cozy with the sorcerers later. Uh, what more important things? Well, if it were to be common knowledge what the Tempest does, then there would be no mystery. No majestic mystique, hmm? Tell me about the title, Tempest. My, 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 we really are a bit simple, aren't we? Perhaps we've been drinking a bit too much of Orlok's ale, hmm? Well, just to humour you, I'll refresh your memory. The title of Tempest is given to the leader of the city of Tenebrae. To become the Tempest, one must have been born of the royal family. It is only through hereditary one may sit upon the throne. Actually, I can't sit anywhere. It doesn't matter of the throne or just regular bar stools. I've lost that ability for some reason. Probably broke my legs when I landed. Why is the Tempestry hereditary? Because the powers that are necessary to bear the title are only transferred from parent to child. Lady Mordea received the power from her father. Does that make things a little clearer for you? Who was more Lady Mordea's father? Didn't you learn anything as a child? Lord Keldon was Lady Mordea's father. And might I add that Lady Mordea is twice the Tempest Lord Keldon ever was. Why, if it weren't for his wife's encouragement, he would never have admitted his powers and assumed the title of Tempest. And then where would we be? Alright, bye. Until we meet again. Boyden wasn't given knees. Yeah, I remember now. I put in arms, legs, torso, head. Forgot the knees. Um, so they're busy ruling. But it looks like we can just wait until uh, they start having the dinner, and then we can sneak in and steal the dagger. It's interesting, the game pauses sometimes and doesn't actually display anything until I move the mouse slightly. So I remember loosely how the plot goes, and how... You know, first we get our necromancy powers, and then we get 
sorcery powers, uh, thaumaturgy powers from Mithrin, um, air powers from Stratos. Do we ever actually try and get Tempest powers? Because the other powers you can get by just having the right items and the right initiation. But the Tempestry powers are hereditary, so uh, we are not of the royal bloodline, so I guess we can't get the powers? Or do we just, like, kill Hydros some other way, or steal their powers, or... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll get around to that part of the plot. I'm just sort of musing to myself at this point. There's bits of the game I remember, and bits that are hazy. Plus, I guess, if there's people watching and, you know, they want to play this themselves at some point, or uh, maybe they're still stuck in Moonshade in Ultima 7 Serpent Isle, and they won't be getting to Ultima 8 Pagan for a little while. Um, you know, they might not want to be spoiled either, so I guess, in terms of spoileriness, uh, we should just take it as, like, if we get stuck, then we'll unstick ourselves. More executions! Okay, okay. Three periods of time. That'll do it. You see, I don't think that they actually do their business schedules if you're in the same area as them. I think it really is like a loading the zone kind of deal. Seven really was, like, ahead of its time with the idea of NPCs going about their daily tasks and, and having their own schedules and things. Oh, very sleepy. So yeah, I want to do... Uh, just cutting stream again, and we'll have Ultima on in the background where he does like a training montage. And other games I want to play but haven't got around to fixing up. Um, there's Weird from the PC format cover disc. I got it working in my Windows 3.1 DOS box. Yeah, there we go. It's loaded properly now. Um, but all of the full motion video is not quite full, and not very motion either. So I'm wondering if I can get the Windows 95 version to work. Uh, it'll be better. Uh, but that's something I want to be able to do as like a non-Monday stream day. Play through that a bit. It's, I mean, I say play, it's, it's sort of like an interactive CD-ROM of... Um, spooky mysterious stories uh, like uh, this guy saw a ghost once uh, um, and it's sort of the interface is like mist so it's kind of cool like you unlock some of these uh, encyclopedia entries about like the Winchester house you know that sort of thing have I played heroine's quest I have not star drop uh, can you tell me about it what is it like A bit of a save. Uh, can I just keyring this open? No, no. She's given me the key. Uh, and obviously, I will need to give her this key back because, like, her boss will be like, hey, where's that key that you keep on you? Uh, so, what I'll do is I will add this key to my keyring. And now it is forever locked to my keyring, and no one could ever remove it. Is this chest trapped, do you think? We do have some scrolls of trap detection. Oh, it's great if you've played Quest for Glory, uh, a sort of spiritual successor, no traps detected. 
and gives me the same feelings. They took the virtual theatre concept from Beneath the Still Sky, where people are wandering around doing things off screen, but they included schedules and stuff. Neat. I will have to check it out. I mean, I, I haven't actually played Quest for Glory either. Um, I know of Quest for Glory thanks to our lovely community of retro streamers who are often playing it. Locked chest. Why would you have the key to the door and the key to the chest be the same key? Alright, we've got a restore to sight scroll. No, not that one. This one? Yeah. And we've got a scroll of invisibility. Don't mind if I do. And a little jewelry box with our special ceremonial dagger. Yoink. You know what we could do? Uh, completely, completely no need to do this, but we could just pick up this regular normal dagger and put it in the box. Oh, come on, Boyden, please, please, please squeeze yourself through the doorway. There we go. The perfect crime. Seems we also can't lock doors behind us. Oh no, we can lock the door, we just can't lock the chest. Cool. Uh, I also bought Prey during the winter Steam sales, and uh, you know, it's not a retro game, it's a modern game by Arcane Studios of Dishonored fame. And I really want to play it, and I really should but I've just got so much stuff that I also want to do that I haven't got around to it. Um, but maybe we can do a little stream of that here and there, who knows. I am very slowly, very slowly, rebuilding my mental health. I uh, feel like I'm on a bit of a tightrope, you know? Strong breeze could knock me over at this point. We need a bit more resilience there. But it's getting there, slowly. Being able to do streams and being able to make cool things and give them to my friends as birthday presents and uh, making things for my stream and, you know, software that does cool things and not just software because the man needs another website thing to sell more real estate. Uh, it is good. It feels nice. One step at a time. That's how you do it. Well, sometimes it's one tiny step at a time. And sometimes it's big strides, and then sometimes you bump into a wall and you're like, ugh. Ultima 8, the perfect metaphor for mental health. Do I know much about WordPress? No, nothing. I, what, what's a WordPress? I have no idea what you mean, Dr. Es Dr. Esmond. No, no. How do you press a word? Exactly, Fire Broadside. It makes no sense. It was this way to the graveyard, I believe. Yeah, like, back at previous employer... Oh no, water, water. Careful. At previous employer... We had contractors set up a bunch of WordPress sites for our various products. So, you know, they set it up, set it going, done, great. Must be damn annoying that water is deadly, yeah. At least in 7, you just kind of run up into it and stop. Um, like, you can't swim, but okay, you won't die either. Uh, so, WordPress sites, right? Yeah, get set up fire and forget and then and then we need to upgrade them because WordPress is rife with security vulnerabilities and no one at the company actually does WordPress things and hey this thing that got set up is is semi adjacent to your product that you work on can you can you fix that up 
And we're like, no, none of us have that skill, but I guess we'll try because we have to fix the security vulnerabilities. And we eventually, you know, bash our heads at it and do it. And it works eventually. And uh, then the problem is like, aha, you guys are the WordPress guys now. You can fix anything now. I can recommend Tai Chi if you want to incorporate exercise into your mental health building quest, but exercise makes you feel like you're dying, or the gym is the most boring thing you can think of. Turns out moving very slowly can be interesting. Uh, thanks, Stardrop. Yeah, Tai Chi is interesting. Uh, I have occasionally, when I've been out and about in the morning, seen some aunties uh, at one of the local parks doing it. And, uh, yes. Just sort of being aware of your body and moving, yeah. Yoga, I guess, also is similar. Uh, we have fans of yoga in the retro community. I could probably do that at some point. It's all about, like, forcing yourself to find the time for it, you know? I managed to accidentally right-click on the title bar and took a screenshot. Amazing. Yoga! Yes. I think yoga wins the popularity contest between the two. Well, Tai Chi is cool. Um, my favorite fighter in Dead or Alive is Lei Fang, who does Tai Chi Chuan as her combat style. Alright, this is the cemetery, but where's the bloody main building. Why did they have to put this enormous fence here? It's not like they're fencing in the graveyard and the not graveyard. The graveyard is clearly spilled out to the whole area. Flow arts might also be an option. I find them a lot less boring than traditional exercise. Some of the um, trance music streamers I follow they also do some amazing flow arts. Like, they've got the pixel whip, they've got the hoop, they've got the levitation wand dealy. Um, yeah, those look really cool. And I do love me some RGB LEDs. Oh, hello, um, Vividos. How are you doing? I got your dagger. There are definitely going to be no repercussions oh, for the servant that I have the dagger now. I smack myself on the head with a pixel whip handle and haven't played with it since. Hoops are thankfully a lot safer. Yeah, the hoop is nice. Um, yeah, one streamer in question managed to hit herself in the eye <laughs> with the whip. Yeah. Uh, how are you today, Vividos? Not well, I fear. Our problem still exists, and Lothium nears her end. Have you managed to get the dagger away from Mordea? Uh, yes, I'm here to learn. Oh my, this is excellent news. Well, I shall teach you all about our mysteries and traditions. Traditions? Our lives are very structured. One must perform our rites very precisely, lest they, do not, lest they be not accepted. Yet sometimes such precision can create problems. Um, what mysteries? I cannot tell someone who's not of our order, blah, 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 blah. I want to join, yes. What's a novice? Join your order? Um, necromancer? I need to speak to the necromancer. She's too sick to see me. Lothian? Long has the she been necromancer. Lothian has loyally served since I was but a boy. What problems? As I said, in our rituals, everything must be done at the right time, with the right tools. Unfortunately, we're missing a most important tool. No, you're not. Missing a tool? Yes, our ceremonial dagger was taken from that power-mad witch, Mordea. Mordea took the dagger? Yes. Never. People, res why is this dagger special? Why is this? This dagger I'm holding here. People respected your work? Uh, 
<sighs> um, People's Regard has lessened. What dialogue option do I need to join your silly order? What about Mordea? We've, we've read all of this before. Power mad? Uh, now she's gone too far. She has the dagger. No, she doesn't. Gone too far? You need her approval? Yes, without her approval, we cannot perform our rituals. We cannot work under such conditions. We need to get the dagger back soon, or there will be great danger. Get the dagger back. How? Lothian is very ill and must... Uh, besides, neither of us are trained warriors to challenge Mordea's guards. How could we possibly retrieve the dagger? I'll get the dagger. Will you truly? Yes, I have it here. Thank you. I have heard it keeps the dagger in chambers. Please hurry, for soon we will need the dagger. Stay by her side. Okay, bye. Please, let me give you this dagger, which I... No, that's not the dagger. Did I accidentally reload a save and... Did I put the wrong dagger in the box again? I wouldn't have done that, surely. Not even in my sleep adult state. No brain cells left. We're gonna have to teleport back and just check that we we got the correct dagger. I mean, it looks very different. Oh, I probably just derped up, didn't I? I probably just had a massive brain fart. And, um... In wanting to prank Mordea, pranked myself. Pranked myself hard. Oh great, and they're at court again now. like this. I wish Poppy would come out and be cute on stream to distract from my incompetence. That many. I suppose I could turn myself invisible. I've got a black potion. And a scroll of invisibility, I think. Please be eating, not eating. All right, all right, let's save and just confirm that I am a complete derp. And if I am a complete Treasure derp... Britannia succumbs easily. Soon all the land will be mine. Cool, Guardian. You do you. Uh, and if that is the case, then I'll just accept the loss of the potion. Ooh, the door opened. But there's no one in there. Spooky. Wow, the game is really lagging hard now. Is it just the invisibility effect, or is it because I've got the bags open? Okay, it was because of the bags. Right, yeah, we locked it. Well done, Avatar. Voiden, whatever. I'm a complete idiot, or I messed up the save game somehow. Probably complete idiot. I'll check the VODs. Please pick it up. Oh great, we've turned back to normal. That's fine, we'll teleport out of here. That's what I wanted to do. That I wanted to leave a dagger there to be like, haha. Here's your sacred dagger. And I managed to prank myself instead. Man, now I'm gonna have to do some editing for the VOD to like yell at myself. Like, stop, you dummy. 
You put the, the correct dagger back. And there was literally no need to do that either. There's no like quest involving switching one dagger for the other. It's literally something I did to amuse myself. Honestly, a quest to switch the dagger for a fake would have been better, because then Mordea might not realize that the necromancers actually have the real one and can do whatever they please again. Like, you could have the blacksmith make a copy, maybe? But Ultima 8 seems to be very much, um, like, all of the things you do here, they're all fuck around and find out. We are in the fuck around phase. We absolutely do not care about the consequences of our actions because we plan to ditch this entire world as soon as we possibly can. It's already been taken over by the Guardian, so it's not like we actually have to um, save it or anything. I'm hunched over like a prawn. I've got Twitch streamer posture. I mean, I suppose I could do a posture check redeem or something like that. But then uh, we would just be doing it all the time. Yeah. Happens to us all, Dr. Yasmin. I'm hunched over a computer for work all day, and then I'm hunched over... Uh, thank you for redeeming gorillas.bass, Dr. Yasmin. I uh, will hand in this dagger, and then we'll use that to round off the stream. Yeah, work all day, hunched over a computer. Then, for recreational purposes, hunch over a computer in the afternoon, evening. Crunch, 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 crunch. Our footsteps are surprisingly loud, considering we are actually barefoot. Where's Vividos hanging out now? Oh, hello. Cool, Lothian's there. Are we gonna cure her sickness? We're gonna cure her sickness now with your magic, right? So we'll watch this cutscene, and then we'll play... Is that the sweet song of lamentation I hear? Possibly, Guardian? I don't know. I don't know what you're hearing. Oh, no, no. Don't quit. And then we'll play some Gorilla's Bass, and uh, then I will rest. Yes. Hi! I got your dagger this time. I actually have your dagger this time. Truly, you have the dagger. Bless you, my friend, bless you. Your timing is perfect, for I need the dagger immediately. May I please have the dagger? Sure, what, what are you going to use it for? Is Lothian, like, uncomfortable on that stone slab? Thank you, my friend. You've done good service this day, and your timing could not be better. For as you can see, Lothian lies upon the altar, barely clinging to life. For your service, I will grant you the boon which you did ask of me. I will introduce you to the necromancer. But first, stand witness to the ceremony of eternity, for the time has come for Lothian and I to perform the ceremony. Please follow my instructions clearly. Are you prepared, Lothian? All of my life I have prepared for this, Viviados. I beg you now, send me to the Mountain King. Very well. Please, my friend, stand beside the altar. Please kneel before the altar of passage. 
Lord Lithos, Mountain King, eldest and mightiest of the four titans, we come forth to send your faithful servant Lothian into your waiting arms. Tell us now. Lord of the Underworld, does this, our sacrifice, please you? Yes, Lord, take me. I am ready to greet you, Mountain King. Let us all rejoice, for Lithos is pleased with this, our sacrifice. Now, prepare to greet the ambassadors from Lithos' Lithos's realm. <clears throat> Carl Corp. Oh, it's the ambassadors. The dead now surround you, Lothian. Prepare yourself for your lord. The grave opens before me. Be you cleansed for death. Lithos awaits you. Sweet dagger, I am your sheath. Wear me now, lovely blade. Bow to you, to the mountain king. From life to death, from death to Lithos. Ex Ort Corp, Orc des Lithos. Stab. Now shall we bow in reverence of deeds here done, and to the mount awesome might of the Mountain King. All is done, Lothian may now join her lord. Arise, my friend. You may now greet the necromancer, my friend, for I am he. You murdered that woman! I killed her, yes, but I did not murder her. Well, what's the difference? Murdering someone is to take their life against their will. Lothian had known nearly her entire life that, when it was her time of passage, she would be killed in this fashion. The same will happen to me when it is my time. So that's the ceremony of eternity. Yes, the ceremony must be performed as Lithos has commanded. You see, as Lothian was necromancer, she will be permitted into the Hall of Eternity. In order to be allowed into this most hallowed of places, the necromancers must be prepared in the Ceremony of Eternity. Uh, I have this issue where I see a sentence without punctuation. It makes it sound really monotone to me, so spells sound really dull. I will introduce you to the necromancer. The necromancer's dead. Long live the necromancer. Assisted dying in the 90s? Wow. Welcome in, Stefan. Uh, what is the Hall of Eternity? The Hall of Eternity is a special place within the City of the Dead. The City of the Dead is a place where only necromancers are allowed. It is there that Lithos sits upon his throne and consults his necromancers and dispenses his judgment. The Hall is a most prestigious place. Why did you have to stab her? Have you not heard a word that I said? The Ceremony of Eternity is one of our most sacred rites. It is Lithos' law. Um, the same will happen to you? Of course. When my time comes to be sent to meet the Mountain King, my first apprentice will perform the Ceremony of Eternity and prepare me for my journey. It is the way of the Necromancer. And am I going to be your first apprentice? Yes, the heart of Lithos' realm, the City of the Dead, is where all Necromancers who have been interred go and live on in death under Lithos's gentle rule. Farewell. Farewell, my friend. So I guess we're a necromancer now. And, uh... can pause the game here. Save. And a stream three. Ugh. Ugh, neck's about to give in. The added weight of the headphones causing some strain. Ah, right. So, um, yes, that was another episode of Ultima 8 Pagan. Uh, I think maybe they could have just used any old dagger. It didn't have to be the special dagger. But, um, Dr. Yasmin has redeemed gorillas.bass, and have I even set up the proxy for that today? Ooh, okay. Gorillas. Gorillas. Oh, so I need to quit DOSBox because it will also be running in DOSBox. And I have.
have actually set up a special scene for this now. Fancy, special. Uh, where did I put it? But, uh, um, I don't have a shortcut for the background, so I need to, or do I? I think I added it. Uh, and again, like I tab out a DOS box and I come back in and I just started typing, but when I typed G, it toggled through my game scenes because they the letter G. And I guess if I say uh, J for just counting, sources, yeah, various sources, hooray. I assume it's the update to OBS that I did, but I'm really annoyed because uh, my little chat window that I've got embedded in OBS does actually have focus on it, and it does have a flashing cursor, so it looks like I'm able to talk. Hmm. Uh, did I not spell? I didn't. Seriously, my brain juice is running dry. Uh, launch. Let's have launch. So that's that, that's that. Where is the scene? Lost it. No, full screen. Brothers, there we are. Uh, so then we go Gorillas Connect. Do we not? Why is the aspect ratio wrong? Oh, because this is regular DOSBox and not DOSBox staging. Cool, cool. Well, whatever, it's fine. Uh, so anyone who is interested in playing uh, a little quick round of gorillas.bass may do so by typing pl uh, gorillas play. There you go. Uh, so Dr. Yasmin, if you wish to also partake, you can do the same command. And then once the game starts, we can use the bang banana command to throw exploding bananas at each other. What fun. So it's your turn first. And why is the chroma key not working? Damn it. I have a cool chroma key set up for this, or I did. Um, where's the background? On. Could be cooler. Um, What is BG Capture window? Where are we? Gorilla's background. There we go. And then the chroma key is on the wrong color. Um, so, Dr. Yasmin, you're up first, and you can do um, like banana 50 50. Um, while well, I fix this chroma key. Oh, you hit the building. So close. Um, can I add a filter to this? How did I do this before? Filters, chroma key. Not red. Why would it be red? Blue. Not that blue either. Um, custom color. Select color. Like kind of that color blue. There we go. Now that's more epic. And I should have some epic music going, but I don't. So please imagine in your head whatever earworm you currently have going. Uh, uh, I will do an angle of 50 and a speed of 40. There is also the wind to consider. Um, there's a little red arrow at the bottom there that you might be able to see. And that's the current wind direction.
Hell yes, banana throwing portal. Uh, yeah, you, you don't use the arrow there. Uh, you um, you just do normal exclamation mark thing. Uh, I didn't do it because it's not my turn. There you go. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, and again, DOSPOP. Uh, not OBS. What the hell? Let me type. <sighs> Such a scuffed stream today. Um, higher and faster. Much faster. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, this might do it. Okay, well, you might think that ha that has obliterated you, Dr. Yasmin, but your spirit lives on. I did not get a direct hit. Uh, this, this game only counts direct hits. Oh, going off into space. Well done. You got me. So we're still playing like the OG version of Cubasic Gorillas here. So it does three games and it's kind of the best of three. Um, but this time I start and the wind is in my favor. So perhaps uh, 30, 40? Not that in my favor. Okay. I need to add some background music to the scene. I have the ability now. I just need to find some epic music to play. I'll do some cantata real quick. Ooh, nearly got yourself there. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I think I liked the angle before. I just need, like, heaps more power. Yes, 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 no, no, too high. Uh, music, music. Where is my OC remix? Hmm. Okay, went off into space. Uh, what did I do last time? So I do 90, so maybe 30, 75? Yes, yes. We're not doing any desktop capture here. Oh. Audio output capture. That one. Thank you. I'll get you this time. Uh. Slow. Oh shit, he's locked me in. That's some sort of homing banana, Dr. Yasmin. Are you cheating at this game that I'm hosting for us? Well done. You win. You are a mage. Ah. Your cat's on your desk and you put a bort hole on your second monitor right on where chat is. So if I've coded this correctly, it might now let Gomi face off against Dr. Yasmin. 
Yeah, there we go. I wouldn't mind setting this up somehow to be like completely autonomous. Um, so I could just have it on as a AFK stream. She was settling down to lie down, but she was very rude. Aw. All right, Gomi launches her first volley. Lands a bit short. Dr. Yasmin, how do you answer? Oh, it's gone up in the air, but not very far. Gomi, now's your chance. Oh, that was dangerously close there. You hit the sun, Dr. Yasmin. Look at that sun. Yeah, I think this works pretty well for a chat-based game because, I mean, there's inevitably going to be lag on, um, on like, the stream and chat. Oh, just, you need to be in between those two shots there. But you do at least get feedback in chat pretty quickly. And, uh, the delay shouldn't be too, too bad. It's not like we're asking you to play Q-Basic Nibbles on stream. That would be difficult. All right, donor 50-50, Here we go. Don't know for sure if this will hit, because the wind does add a little bit of variance. Oh, nice one. First round goes to Gomitan. And Dr. Yasmin, claw back a win. The banana head is brutal, totally erases you from your reality, yeah. When, like, you know, this game came out and it was on, like, all your school PCs and things, because the school PCs had DOS, and DOS had QBasic, and QBasic had Gorillas and Nibbles as example games, we would play it all the time. And I used to enjoy hacking the game to change the radius of the explosion to be, like, absurdly large. It wouldn't do anything unless you got a direct hit, but it was still kind of uh, stupid enormous. It looks awesome with the background. Thanks. Oh, wow. Look at that. Ninja banana throw. Now, again, the game was coded weirdly, so it always does three rounds, even if the other player has won two rounds out of three already, so they've they've kind of already won. Um, it's just how the game was programmed. Ooh, but that's close. You might be able to redeem yourself here, Dr. Yasmin. Sometimes when you're in a pit like that, yeah, your only choice is to just drill a hole through the nearest building, killing millions of innocent civilians just to get a clear line of sight. And Dr. Yasmin wins the third round. But the game does go to Gomi Tan. Well done, everyone. Thank you for participating. If you don't mind, I'll call the stream here. Um, the game will keep going on as, as long as everyone is going. Um, gorilla stop, maybe? Yeah, like, it'll remove me from the queue, but I don't have something to stop everyone. Gorillas? Um, connect round... Ah, gorillas quit? Thank you for streaming the Banana Throne game. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming along. 
I'm not in the queue to play. Well, I can just click this button and, and kill it off. Um, yes, let's go to the scene where you can see my face. Hello. Um, thanks for stream thrilling match. Uh, that's my robot. Great stream record. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Red Goblin is playing a little big adventure if you want to raid another RPG kind of stream. Uh, I appreciate the suggestion, but actually I had someone in mind from the start. Um, MacGlad is doing a stream, and he hasn't often streamed lately. He's on a BRB stream right now, but um, I thought maybe we could go raid into him. Uh, he's been playing Cave Story, which is nice. So there's your URL if you get left behind by the raid. Uh, here's a raid message, why not? Copy it yourself, Mecca. Thank you. And, um... Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by. It's nice having you with me while we're playing through nostalgic games. Be them Ultima or Gorillas.Bass. Um... And I will try and get my shit together and do more fun things for stream. But who knows? Uh, I appreciate your patience in the matter. Uh, take care, everyone. I hope you have a good week. I may see you later during the week, because some of you are streamers yourselves. You are all very awesome people. Everybody, please check out everybody else. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely little retro community we have here on Twitch. It is nice. Uh... Sure. Yeah, I'll just start the raid. I don't know when MacGlad's coming back from the BRB screen, but we've got some clips to watch from other cool streamers. So that'll entertain us, won't it? Um, slash raid MacGlad. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm going to rest up and possibly try and fix my sleep. Take care of yourselves, people. Bye-bye.